guys, if you are interested in watching me craft or uh, talk about life lessons, talk about anything that I'm building, doing, going through, anything like that, uh, long-term sobriety, uh, life lessons, all that good stuff, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, like it, share it with your friends, do all that good shit. Okay, bye. On to the video. All right, well, we, we figured out we're going to do it to this Blood Angel Army I 3D printed and made. Um, I found the STL files on like Cult of 3D or something like that. Um, I repurposed a lot of it and what we have right now is a very zoomed up version of what appears to be my chest and left shoulder. As I paint pen color these uh, minis that I made. So today um, we were going to we were going to talk about DTs or delimia, delirium tremens shaky frenzy as it's called um, shit like if you've been through DTs then you've been through DTs um, there, there is no I'm afraid of doing this or I am afraid that I'm going to go into DTs like if you've never had them and then you have them it's a whole other thing. It's like night and day. So um, I actually took a uh, spray can or a spray paint from Dollar General to get that red. And I'm really happy with what it turned out with. Um, here, I'm just adding a little bit of uh, metallic silver to it. But uh, getting back on task with... Uh, alcohol withdrawals, and delirium tremens. So those usually occur after a period of heavy drinking. And when I say usually, they always. Uh, they only happen in very, very severe alcoholics. So this isn't something to threaten you or frighten you. Threaten you. God damn. Wits over there smiling at me, tripping over my words. But it's not here to frighten you, but um, it has a 37% mortality rate, but only 5% of people going through withdrawals ever actually experience it. Uh, symptoms range from feeling sick to full-blown hallucinations and seizures, like in my case. Uh, and it's also a really slippery slope. Like, you really don't know that you're going into DTs until it's too late because it pops off about three to four days after you quit drinking and can last up to eight days. Uh, Ten days, I think, is like the most extreme one. But, um, you know, the symptoms include agitation and aggression. Check, check. Confusion. Check. Trembling, sweating, shaking tachycardia, nausea, and vomiting, check, 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 impaired conscious, check, hallucination, check, tremors and or seizures, check. I had all these. Um, my DTs started off with uh, some people showing up to talk about the good word to me. Next thing you know, I'm speaking German. And running around with uh, my shirt off. But what causes DTs? Well, when you drink alcohol, it is a depressant. And when people say depressant, they don't mean it makes you sad. It means it depresses all of the functions. It's a suppressor, so to speak. Uh, your body adapts by uh, flooring it. You know, so um, if none of my uh, hormones are getting through, the body's response is to make more home hormones 
and outcompete the alcohol. So what happens is you got all of these excitatory um, neurons out there, or neuron? Is it neuron, or am I thinking of neurotransmitter? What? DTs. GABA. Neurotransmitter. Okay. Um, anyways, so that's going up to 11, and then suddenly your drinking's going from an 11 to a zero. So it's kind of like uh, mashing the gas while holding the brake and then abruptly taking the brake off. Like you just slam right into a fucking wall. Um, so. Of course, the risk factors are uh, seizures, delirium tremens before, because they are easier to get again once you've had them the first time. Um, benzos make it worse, which arguably that's kind of funny because uh, that's what they give you to treat it. And uh, I did some quick math of that. So it says um, like 14 million people are uh, abusing alcohol in the like United States alone. And then we do 37% of that, or 5% get you uh, DTs. And then 37% of that die from DTs, which all comes down to a lovely number of 268,250 people die annually from DTs. That sounds a little too high to be accurate, but um, Wit's not even making a face, so I'm guessing that's close. Nothing. So enough, uh, enough science stuff. Let's talk about what DTs were like for me. Um, it was a slow, slow, slow process. Um, if you've seen any of my videos on like the spiritual progress, kind of, or anything like that, you'll have, um, seen me talking about things, uh, shadow people hanging outside my windows, talking about how I'm not going to make it, how I'm a lost cause, I should give up, so on and so forth, um, Utter chaos, absolute insanity, wouldn't wish it on anybody. And uh, it looks like I'm still adding uh, some, I guess I was doing bullets that were pinging off of it, little dips here and there. Oh, wait, no, I was adding um, black to like the rubber gear that they have, insulating them. Anyway, so going back to the detox, you know, it, they say uh, up to eight days. And I remember being in that hospital uh, trying to fight people. Um, I wasn't in a hospital. I was in hell. Uh, and I was waiting to be experimented on. Uh, so judging from the time frame of things, I went into DTs probably Saturday. So a full 24 hours, if that's any indication of how much I was drinking. Uh, fought some people in a hospital like three or four times. Took like seven nurses to subdue me. Coming out of a coma Wednesday morning, I finally detoxed it enough that I could see people on Thursday. So the time frame really kind of checks out. The paranoia was still there. Uh, and, you know, in my mind, I thought it was, uh, I thought it was, you know, it wasn't my first radio. So I thought I would be fine and I could handle it. Hey, howdy, was I wrong? Okay. So let's get into something that might actually help you. Because uh, I later found out that I had the seizure from trying to hydrate and drinking too much water. So when you're drinking water, I would probably mix in a little bit of sea salt. 
Um, that's what I heard. Does really well for hydrating you. Uh, candy. I do candy for uh, withdrawals. Uh, it's a real quick source of sugar. That's what your body is going into and having that freak out session. That's why you are having cravings. I catch a lot of flack for saying monsters and energy drinks are uh, are helpful, but they do help me, both with the sugar and the caffeine. I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, you don't really sleep a lot when you're detoxing. You know, you're kind of jerking awake. You're not, you're never really fully asleep. And uh, coffee and energy drinks are kind of your best friend when it comes to that. Walks. I took a shitload of walks when I was getting sober. I, um, anytime I was feeling anxious or some type of way about something, I would pop in some headphones and I would go for a walk. Um, I mainly listen to lo-fi, which that's the whole point of why I have the uh, lo-fi channel up there. Not that there's not a million other lo-fi channels already, but I want it to be available for everybody. So, that's what I did. I wanted these tips to be available, so that's what I did. Uh, so, walks, lo-fi, really, really helpful. Um, cleaning and organizing, you'd be surprised. As much as I fucking hate cleaning and organizing, I have really grown to like it. I would watch recovery stories when I was feeling... Uh, like the wheels were about to fall off. I would watch recovery stories. I'd hear these people and I'd hear their stories and I would identify and see where I could fix myself. So anyways, um, if you want more on this, check out the uh, playlist Ramblings of an Insane Person. Slash what I do to stay sober. Um, contrary to popular belief, it's actually helpful. At least it was for me. So uh, give it a try. Share it out. Uh, do all that stuff. And I will catch you on the flip side. Bye.